it's so cheesy, but believe in yourself. I think that for most students, the biggest barrier, I think for actually all of us, we, our biggest barrier in our career is getting in our own way. I think for a lot of students, it's, well, I don't have the experience yet. Well, as long as you wake up and you have thoughts in your head, start sharing them. Start learning how to communicate because the, the value of LinkedIn also is that you learn so much about who you are and what your strengths are. And it's really a great platform. The best skills that you can develop in your career are your communication skills. So the question is this, how do thought leaders, school dropouts, former and current students find out what's next after they do or don't cross that stage? If you want to know the secrets to starting the career or business of your dreams, getting paid whatever you desire, and discovering what you do the best with the least amount of effort, then this is the right podcast for you. I'm Sean Anthony, and this is School's Over. Now what? The podcast. Welcome back to School's Over, Now What? The podcast, and I'm your host, Sean Anthony. Guys, the podcast continues to rise in the charts. And I know I mentioned this before when we were in three countries, but we are now in over 10 countries. This podcast has been played. I cannot thank you enough. Let's continue to do this. Let's continue to reach our audience and build our tribe across multiple platforms. Today's episode is going to be very special. And I wanted to do something different. There is something that a lot of current and former students have a hard time understanding. And one of those platforms is LinkedIn. Yes, LinkedIn is a professional network. Yes, it can get you a job, but I think a lot of people do not realize how simply it can change your life. You make that one connection and everything changes. Your career changes. Your business could change. What you're doing today will be a lot different than what you can do tomorrow. So I wanted to bring on a guest, and this guest is none other than Michaela Alexis. If you guys have been on this platform and utilizing LinkedIn, you are very familiar with her content. She is someone that has over 120,000 LinkedIn followers. Guys, she is the voice of all voices and is a millennial LinkedIn master, a keynote speaker, and an author. And today she is going to break down this platform like you've never heard it. And I wanted to make sure that this week students who are in school that are trying to prepare themselves for that job, people who have graduated that do not know what job or what resume or how they could obtain the career of their dreams, did not know how to go about it. I wanted to make sure this week you were going to learn every single step along the way. This one's helpful. So with that being said, I'm not even going to waste your time. Here is none other than Michaela Alexis as we talk all things LinkedIn with episode 15. Well, first off, we want to welcome you to School's Over Now with the podcast, and we are excited to have you here with us today, Michaela. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. That's great. So for those who don't know, I'm pretty sure they're going to look you up after this conversation on the podcast. You are like the queen of LinkedIn. So I got to ask you, how did this all start? Like, where did this begin for you? Oh, geez. Yeah. So, I mean, my story on LinkedIn started in March of 2016, and I wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't school's over now what, but I, it was more like, I lost my job now what? <laughs> <laughs> and so I was laid off uh, from the startup that I was working at, and it was about a month before my 30th birthday, and I had all these ideas of what 30 was going to look like. You know, I'd have the big house and the perfect family and a stable career, and I was looking around, and I was finding that I didn't have any of those things. And I started um, really thinking about the way that I was going about my career. You know, you go and you work at one job and you you kind of end up staying in that role, even if it's not right, because it's better than starting all over. And I thought to myself, I don't want to start all over anymore. I want to create something 
that people can see me, they can know me, they can know my story, know my experiences, uh, and know what I'm all about. So I started writing on LinkedIn. At first, I was writing about marketing and social media. Yeah. And uh, then I, I made kind of a bold move. I said that I wasn't going to send out any resumes. I'm a big, big believer that the old way or traditional way of looking for jobs, which is send out a gazillion resumes and wait for someone to call you, absolutely, uh, is really broken. It's really, really broken, especially now that technology has made things more, in quotations, efficient. Um, but it really means that um, so many of us are just a number, you know, and if mm-hmm. you don't um, fill out your resume and have certain keywords, then you're out of luck. And uh, I wanted to, people to actually see me. So I, I posted online, said, said, this is what type of role I'm looking for. This is my dream company. And this is what I have to offer. And um, so were you so, like, were you like very vulnerable? It sounds like with, with this story. Uh, you know, it, I don't necessarily think it was like vulnerability. I think it was like frustration. I don't know if it, it, even frustration is the right word. It was just, I need to change my strategy. Mm-hmm. I am a marketer by heart. And what I originally did was I sent out 10 resumes and I put a tracking code on each one of them because I wanted to see how many of the resumes that were actually open. And only one of them was open. And that was a big wake up call for two reasons. Number one, from like a strategy perspective, I just don't like wasting time. Exactly. (laughs) Two, the hardest part of, you know, when you graduate or when you're looking for jobs is confidence. And so many of us, we send out all these resumes and we automatically assume that if we're not getting a call back, that it means that we're just not. You're not hitting. Yeah. Right. And um, I was like, well, you know, if only one of them is opening, (laughs) you know, and this confidence thing is an issue, I need to find a better way. Yeah. And uh, so I posted on LinkedIn and I was shocked because that was the first time that I really realized that people can care about other people without wanting something from them. Like I was Hmm. so incredibly touched by the fact that people were touched by my story and they were invested in my story. You know, I had strangers that were reaching out to me saying, um, we don't have anything that's like available, but we need a person like you in our company, someone that makes bold moves and is scrappy and all of these things. And so I ended up going, like I was going on three interviews a day, which I, let me tell you, just never happen. Uh, it was crazy. So, my first article went viral on LinkedIn in March of 2016. What was that article? Um, it was called How I Landed My Dream Job in Two Weeks on LinkedIn, which basically chronicled the story that I just told you um, about how I had found a better way to basically stand out in a sea of competition. And I was really blown away by that because I have, you know, I've done like the nice white papers and like, <laughs> infographics. And I'm sitting here being like, this article took me half an hour. Um, I like stole memes off the internet, (laughs) completely unpolished. And yet here I was on a platform that everyone was saying was like stale and conservative. Mm -hmm. People were touched by the fact that it was, you know, relatable and conversational and helpful. And that was kind of the moment for me that I realized that I could create a community of people because, you know, on LinkedIn, everyone was saying that, you know, this is a professional platform and you need to be a certain way. By far they do. the numbers just weren't showing that, right? And, yeah. Um, even if, I, you know, I looked at um, some of the studies that were done of the articles that had done um, the best the previous year, and number three um, in terms of topics was self-esteem. Mm. And so I'm like, well... I wonder why is that the case, though? Why, why self-esteem? Uh, because I think that, you know, whether or not we are at work or at home, we are still people. And we still have struggles. Uh, It's not like we put on this like suit and it's like all of a sudden we're a robot. And, you know, if somebody says something to us at work or something happens or when we get laid off, it's not a big deal. It's just business. You know, I heard that my whole career. It's Mm -hmm. just business. Well, why the day after I was laid off was I sitting there feeling like I had been hit with like a truck uh, and feeling pure grief? Uh, why were those things happening? And in my head, I'm like, well, if I'm experiencing all of these things, then chances are other people are also experiencing them too. Certainly. And so I started writing about all of the things that I was experiencing, fear, fear, failure, maintaining confidence throughout the job search, reporting harassment, all of those things, um, and kind of like just grew my following from there. And, And really in my head, all I was doing was, sharing my experiences and hoping that I would touch the heart of one person. 
Wow. And you know what's crazy is that you mentioned like resume keywords. Like I know a lot of students, they have no idea like what's a good keyword. Like, so what are some of those resume keywords that go from one out of 10 to having, you know, more things being open? Oh, Lord. Um, I mean, I don't I mean, there's obviously there's certain keywords in terms of your uh, LinkedIn profile that I think that you should include. I am of the mindset that because we spend so much time focusing on um, a resume or your cover letter. But the reality is, is that for most people, you're not going to get that chance to even have that read. And so for me, I've always used my LinkedIn profile as basically a personal um website or a career museum so that people can have a really good idea of who I am. And then hopefully by the time I go in for an interview, it's just a matter of how much money do you want and when can you start? Because if you can qualify um, companies by just showcasing your experiences um, and really addressing all of the things that come up frequently. So I actually um, do a little bit of coaching with students right now. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing that I tell them is, okay, so you've gone on a couple interviews what are the questions that are coming up again and again? We all know what they are, right? Yeah. What are the challenges that you've had to overcome? Or tell me about um, a time. Yeah, there's, there's all sorts of things that come up frequently. And I look at that very similarly to a company that has FAQs on their website. Well, you should have FAQs on your LinkedIn profile. So if you know for a fact that the questions that are coming up are, let's just say, um, what challenges have you had to overcome? then shoot a video or a post um, like a branded photo and attach it to your profile so that somebody that is looking at your profile can see your answers to all of those questions before you walk into the front door. Because you just showing that you care. Oh, that's good. You want to answer those, those questions proactively. I mean, listen, I am all about being proactive. I am impatient. I don't like waiting in line. Um, I hate lines. I think that they shouldn't exist. And so I have basically found a way to not wait in line. Uh, and that is just by putting in the work ahead of time. Man. And, and, and so you're finding all these different ways to kind of like get ahead and FAQs, which I think is very cool. But I think that sometimes like when you're looking at LinkedIn, especially such a business platform, you have like a long debate on what profile photos you have like is there any advice on that yeah so the profile photo is a big one i think that we get really caught up in shoulds um what you should do and for me a strong personal brand is all about competence and confidence so if you can display those two things on your profile you are 10 steps ahead from everybody else so when it comes to your profile photo don't worry so much i hear people all the time I'm supposed to have a white background or I'm supposed <laughs> to, you know, you're supposed to look and feel like you. So if you do not wear a tux every single day, you should not have a tux in your photo. Um, <laughs> you know, there's not one business look. And that is the actually the beauty of the business world right now. You know, back in the day, yeah, for sure, people would walk into work and there was definitely kind of a universal dress code yep. um, for how you looked in an office. Now it's not like that. You know, there are some places where it might be totally normal to show, show up in jeans and a t-shirt and other places where, yeah, it's definitely a lot more formal, but really it's all about you and your style. So I always tell people that make sure that you look the same on your profile that you would if you met the person in, um, in an interview. So mm. if you day to day are more creative and you've got the sleeve of tattoos and you've got like the the thick rim glasses and all of that rock that look, but make sure that you also look that way when you show up in person. Cause it, again, it's all about consistency. Basically what we're trying to do here is uh, proactively build trust mm -hmm. and likability and people will lose trust. If you show up looking totally different. <laughs> That, that would be like kind of like false advertising, right? You're like, okay, I'm going to wear an unbuttoned shirt and then show up in a t-shirt. I think that, yeah, that <laughs> It throws people off. I think that, you know, life is so unpredictable that our brains really like predictability. Mm -hmm. So if you see somebody online, you want them to be that same person in person. Um, and if you can be consistent, um, it really does uh, help your chances at landing that job. So let's say like you don't have a lot of, 
job experience, right? You, you haven't had a lot of jobs coming out of school. Yeah. How could you beef up like your bio? Okay. So, so your bio is essentially the summary of who you are and why you do what you do. But let me kind of like, like just update that a little bit for students. So your summary is who you are and why you want to do what you want to do. Okay. So basically you want to basically chronicle uh, the story of your life and how you've gotten to this point and where you want to go. Uh, it's not about this, this platform is not about experience. Um, somebody that I often recommend to students is Natalie Rizzo. Natalie Rizzo is somebody that she graduated probably about two months ago now. And the girl has almost half a million followers on LinkedIn. Wow. Uh, she has been really phenomenal at chronicling her ideas. I mean, just because you're a student doesn't mean that you your opinions about the world are irrelevant. You know, there are tons of people that are out there that are writing articles about the newer generations or people coming out of school, but they have no idea what it's like. So I tell people, explain that. Mm -hmm. chronicling your journey from start to finish actually students are in a really great position right now because you have the ability to start sharing your story from the very beginning you know this isn't about sharing your your successes and how you got there it's about bringing people along for the ride so if you can start right now there's actually a section on your linkedin profile that for education and you can share the courses that you've taken. And I would really take that as an opportunity to start talking about the courses that you really enjoy and why you enjoy them. But definitely don't, I mean, for most students, it's all about the self-esteem. I haven't made it yet, but it's mm -hmm. not a personal brand. It's not about whether or not you've crossed the finish line. You know, you can still be tying your shoelaces and still have a strong personal brand. Man, so if you're out there and you're trying to create a personal brand and that's something that you definitely need uh, coming out of school, right? You got to kind of identify yourself with the world to get those job opportunities. What's a way to kind of make your personal brand stand out to that recruiter that may click your page? Because I feel like LinkedIn is filled with so many recruiters that are constantly looking for talent. Yeah, I think that for me, what I've always tried to do is sprinkle my personality in everything that I create from my my background photo to my profile photo. Um, my whole profile feels like Michaela. And even when it comes to my resume, I mean, part of this is because I'm so bored with resumes, but my last resume was actually a Willy Wonka inspired chocolate bar. So it was called the Michaela Bar. I can't remember what the slogan was. It was something sweet and a little bit nutty. <laughs> That's was. creative. Um, and then my my actual resume was the uh, golden ticket inside the chocolate bar. But what was really great about that is that it allowed me to uh, share a photo of my resume with the community. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm not just giving that resume to the person that I'm interviewing with, but everyone else is also seeing my creativity. So if you are, I'm a big, big believer in showing, don't telling. Mm -hmm. We've spent our whole lives being sold to uh, and people telling us about how great they are. You know, if you are a creative, show that you are creative. If you are analytical, show that you are analytical. If you believe that you have strong communication skills, then get on video on a regular basis and show that you have those strong communication skills. If you're saying that you're good at writing, you should have your whole portfolio readily available for recruiters. Basically, what you want to do is take out steps for the recruiter or take out steps uh -huh. for the employer to know who you are. Um, I can't even tell you. So I've been on both sides. I've been a job seeker and I've also been somebody that's hired employees. And I can tell you as somebody that has hired the one thing that people do not do is that they are not proactive and they do not proactively um, bring any sort of materials that are going to help the person that's interviewing them really get a sense of, of their experience and their talents. So if you are a writer, you should by default be bringing your portfolio to any interview that you go to. Uh, I think that, that makes probably sense. in like 10 applicants, maybe two of them have actually done this. Or ask, ask ahead of time, what can I bring to help you with your decision? Because we're all kind of, we're all <laughs> people. Yeah. We're all, all about us. So if you can take out steps and make it easier for the person interviewing you to make a decision, whether or not you're a fit, 
uh, I would say do that. Okay, so like, for example, if you're someone that was, let me just throw it out there, like somebody that's an SGA, right? They're on like some student council, they've graduated with, they were like the president of five or six different clubs. Should they show up to the interview with like all these awards and just hand them out? Or should they have a, a professional way of showing that these are things that I've accomplished? Well, I mean, you know, if you're an athlete, you probably shouldn't show up to an interview with all your medals around your head. <laughs> Certainly not. <laughs> I mean, that's like, that's kind of like teetering between like confidence and arrogance. Um, but, but I think that when it comes to like winning awards and if you are really involved with your community um, and with your school, a really great way to showcase that is by asking for recommendations. So a lot of students don't realize they think that recommendations on your LinkedIn profile are from people that you work with or work for. And yes, that is also true. But one of my very first recommendations on LinkedIn came from one of my best friends uh, who we went to school together and we took a class together. So I'm like, hey, can you write me a recommendation and I'll write you a recommendation? <laughs> exactly. Um, and then it just kind of created the habit from there. But what's really great is that you can bring that along. So rather than just hoping that the interview went well enough that you're going to have references, but that you, know, you were in the same club or you worked on an event together, Again, it's all about making it as easy as possible for the person that is um, is interviewing with is interviewing you. And it make and it makes so much sense to like kind of do that. I like the fact that you mentioned about recommendations. I know when I was trying to get my LinkedIn like up and running and exciting, so I can have many opportunities come my way. The fine the, the quickest way I found that this is successful is to leave a recommendation on somebody's page. Next thing you know, they're like coming back with more and more, and people do genuinely see that. So I appreciate you for you know sharing that. So if I'm a student, right, and I just graduated school, and let's say I don't don't know what I'm doing and I'm trying to balance out like two different hustles right I want to go corporate or I want to go have a job opportunity but I have a passion doing something completely different is it okay to display both of those on your LinkedIn or should you just be one track driven mm -hmm. so I just want to premise this by saying that because I know that a lot of students feel really alone in the fact that they have no idea what they're doing when they graduate and I I think that there are so many people that are out there that are still trying to figure it out. You know, even me, I am now, I truly believe that I'm living my purpose, but it took me a really long time to get here. It definitely did not happen after school. I actually went to school for legal studies and mm. my minor was in psychology, which has actually helped me quite a bit. Um, but I ended up uh, traveling and bartending for a year and a half and then cleaning urinals before I went into marketing. <laughs> so don't don't be too impatient, you know. Um, just focus on figuring out and experimenting uh, and just learning and being curious about the things that are driving you. And if it's not within your, um, and I know that that's kind of a struggle, you know, if it's not yeah. within your major, that's okay. Because I know that a lot of people will talk about how expensive school is and, um, some people see it as a waste um, if you don't end up in that uh, major. But I definitely don't see it that way. I think that I learned so much in university. My hunger for learning has never changed since I left uh, university. The people that I met in university, uh, being curious about everything, questioning everything, those are skills that I never would have learned if I hadn't gone to school. So I think that's like number one is that mm -hmm. it's okay. It's okay to not know. Uh, and really use this time to just experiment um, and explore what, what makes you curious. Um, in terms of, sorry, I can't remember what the question yeah, is. So, yeah. So like, so like in terms of, let's, let's say like I am somebody that is really passionate about yeah. Like I got side hustle, right? And I really, yeah. want, I really want my side hustle to really jump, but I know my side hustle can't be my main hustle yet. Like, is it okay yeah. to tell the world on LinkedIn like what my side hustle is? Uh, you can tell the world whatever you are feeling. So for me, I actually just made the jump from the corporate world to solopreneurship. And, uh, you know, I, I did go from saying this was my dream job. Uh, now this is my dream job. Mm -hmm. And, uh, people didn't flinch because I've never been the, my brand has never been, I have everything figured out. I'm perfect. 
And I, I really think that the more authentic that you can be and be honest about that, be like, you know, I just graduated. This is what I'm really curious about. And also be proactive in trying to uh, connect with people that are within your field. So if you're multi-passionate, Try to find people within your passions that you can reach out to, that you can follow, that you can explore, um, and really just focus on building those communities. And then it will it will happen over time. You'll get clarity. But um, a friend of mine, she's all about um, clarity comes through action. Mm-hmm. And so unfortunately, I, as much as I would love to become more clear about my vision by just sitting and wishing it to happen it really does come from experimenting and through action so don't worry about having multiple passions just focus on building communities around those passions and really exploring what it takes to break into those industries and if it doesn't work out that's cool it's okay to pivot it's never too late to change what you're passionate about hey guys so let me take a guess you're enjoying the show And if that's right, please make sure that you take a screenshot of you listening to the podcast right now and tag me at Sean R. Anthony underscore. I promise you this is going to help in amazing ways. And while you're at it, hit the five star rating and subscribe. With that being said, guys, let's get back to the show. And so, I mean, when you create like a community, which I, I, which I I definitely think you've created a community, you have over 120,000 followers on LinkedIn. When it comes to creating like that type of community, how do you go about creating it in a way where it's engaging and people want to come follow you or, you know, kind of see what you're doing? So one of the struggles that I had in the very beginning was that I used LinkedIn as kind of a journal. So when I failed, I would just talk about the failures. When I succeeded, I would just talk about the successes. Mm -hmm. And what I realized over time was that my stories were not about me. Uh, My reader was a hero. And so when I failed, you have to talk about the lessons that you learned throughout the failure. And when you succeed, you need to talk about the steps that you took to get there and how other people can also achieve the same success. So you really, for me, I actually had to imagine somebody sitting in front of me and I had to imagine speaking to that person Um, because otherwise it just became a monologue. And I think that you see a lot of people that are are basically doing that. And it's because they are sharing the what, but not the so what, not Mm -hmm. why does that matter for the person reading it? So I think that constantly in that, and it's become easier over time because I actually have met these people in person. Uh And so I know what, what they're struggling with. And a lot of people have reached out to me and said, Um, you know, this is a scenario, this is is my story, this is um, what I need to know more about. And so your readers do tend to make things a lot easier in the sense that, you know, if you have a good pulse on your community, uh, it's super, super easy to uh, create content around that. But I think in the beginning, it's really just about sharing your own experiences and the lessons that you've learned from it. And uh, looking at what resonates with your readers, because they will tell you, I really like the part when you said this or yeah. um, they're I open, really right? Like when you talked about this and then you just start exploring those deeper, you know, if people are really focused on that fear of failure element of your story, then maybe kind of diving a little bit deeper into that. But it's all trial and error. I've actually kept my like original articles um, on my LinkedIn profile from like way back in the day. Like the first, I would say the first <laughs> five to six were just like crickets. Um, <laughs> nobody cared. And um, it would have been really easy for me to walk away. But the one thing that I always tell people is just have patience. Um, You know, good things are worth waiting for. And finding a career that you love and finding a community that truly supports you uh, in everything that you do is worth waiting for. So when it comes to your personal brand, be willing to put in the time, uh, deposit the time and energy that you can uh, then withdraw later. It's really, it's an investment. It's an investment in your career. And uh, we're in a really great space now because, you know, for me, I wasn't born into wealth. I didn't have parents that were super connected. I was not born an an heiress. I'm not a celebrity. But there are a place for regular people. LinkedIn is a great leveling field uh, for regular folks to be able to get those same opportunities by spending the time and energy building up that community. Yeah. And I want to I want to dig in a little deep here because I think uh, you're headed somewhere uh, in this particular conversation in this piece. What challenges 
Like we talk about failure. We talk about um, the articles. We talk about things that didn't work. What challenges has Michaela faced doing this whole thing? Whoa. Whew. How long do you have? Um, I mean, I feel on a regular basis, but um, in terms of LinkedIn, I would, I mean, the, obviously the first part, the uh, failure that I just talked about was really writing for myself and not realizing that my stories were not about me. They were about other people. I think that was a big, big, big one. Uh, the other failure that I had is not necessarily a failure, but I was really afraid of coming across too salesy. So I was afraid of Watch that the case. Access. So like I would share a story and then I would kind of leave it at that because I'm like, I just want to give to the community. Mm -hmm. And then I would have people that were commenting saying, what should I read next? So what do I do next? Like they're actually like writing that in the comment section. And then I realized I was doing my audience a disservice by not leading them to the next step. So if you are on the platform, don't be afraid to, to ask for something because we don't realize that by sharing our story, that is a gift somebody else and they want to know how they can support you further and um, be willing to have the confidence to, to share what's what the next step is um, obviously a big struggle for me has been uh, dealing with negativity mm -hmm. obviously you know on a platform that is has been traditional and conservative and a little stale I've dealt with my fair share of criticism I know when I first started, it was still back in the day where sharing a photo of yourself was, it was rubbing people the wrong way. People did not like the fact that I posted in quotation selfies. So, but I was such a believer in sharing photos um, and videos with your story. Because I just think it adds another layer, more context, uh, and really allows people to kind of uh, follow you along on your journey. So I was like, okay, well, I don't want to stop sharing sharing photos but how can i get rid of the criticism of me sharing selfies mm -hmm. so i went out um and i got a camera remote and a tripod and i realized over time because i started taking photos of myself but i was using the tripod and the remote so my both my hands were in the photo and i realized that um a selfie is only really considered a selfie apparently when you have one of the hands out of the phone. <laughs> because after I started d using the remote, like all of the criticism just stopped. So get a tripod, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, get yeah. a tripod. They're like, you have like a professional photographer following you around. Like, no, I have like a budget of like $20 to create my personal brand that I use to buy this remote. But, oh, that's so um, dope. But, you, you know, so it's not necessarily just like getting rid of the photos. I had to find a, a better way of doing it. Um, and then in terms of the negativity, to be totally honest with you, I love negativity for a couple reasons. Number one, whether or not somebody posts something positive or negative on something that I post, it still reaches all of their followers. So uh, it would be silly for me to think that. Uh, that person's opinion is everybody in their community's opinion. And that definitely hasn't been the case for me. Um, oftentimes, people have reached out to me and connected with me because they're like, yeah, um, my old co-worker posted on uh, your uh, update and I don't agree with them. And I'm like, cool, awesome. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is that uh, it really allows you to also open up a conversation about that thing. Yeah, right? love so I it. I had one guy in the very beginning, and he reached out to me privately and said that I need to spend less time writing and more time creating a family. What in the world? That's crazy. Yes, right? It is crazy. So, and what was really crazy about it was that he had no ill will. Like, there was no bad intentions. He was genuinely thinking that he was doing me uh, a favor by giving me this advice. And so I, you know, I obviously did not share their name or any of that information, but I wanted to open up a conversation about what is, how to be professional on a professional platform and what is appropriate and what isn't appropriate and why that comment was not okay. And so I actually wrote a whole article about kind of like around that comment. Yeah. And again, it's not about calling people out. It's about starting conversations because if I'm dealing with comments like this, chances are other people are too. And so I love like the good, the bad, the ugly. It is all part of my story. They are all lessons. Um, when I fail, those are also lessons. You know, last time around, last year around this time, I uh, did a TEDx audition and I had stage fright. I completely froze on stage. 
And rather than just kind of letting it be, I woke up the next day and I contacted the committee and I asked for my audition tape and I shared it online. And for me to this day, I think I probably got more exposure from sharing that failure and the lessons that I learned and, and sh- kind of sharing that chapter one of a very long story yeah. um, than I would have if I actually got the gig. So how did you overcome, how did you overcome stage fright? Cause I, I see you now and I, I'm like, it's no way she has that. How did, how did you overcome stage fright? So what was interesting about that scenario was that I don't know if anyone um, listening has auditioned for, like, I think it would be the same thing for any major play or anything like that. So you get on stage and it's pitch black and you have the spotlight on your face and you can't see people's reactions. And you don't even realize how much you rely on other people's body language to get through talk. Oh, that's deep. Uh, I definitely didn't. And that threw me off completely. I, I can't even tell you. Like, if you would ask me what my name was when I was on stage, I wouldn't have known my name. Wow. I like the whole building was on fire. <laughs> I just wanted to escape. Um, but I think by sharing that video, that probably helped me quite a bit because Again, it kind of made me, it was a good reminder for me that my brand was not built on perfection. It was built on sharing my story authentically. And Mm -hmm. that took a lot of pressure off because usually when it comes to stage fright, it's all about um, that fear of failure, a fear of being judged or misjudged. And so my next talk, my next big talk after that was my keynote. I was speaking right after Gary V at the Sony Center in front of 2,000 people. Oh, no my gosh. Big deal, right? no <laughs> Scary big deal. V. No big deal. Um, <laughs> so I struggled. I struggled even leaving my hotel room. And I made a very, like, I practiced my keynote a gazillion times. And I got on stage. And I looked at the audience. And I made a last-minute decision to say, hey, guys, this is my first keynote. Um, and it was amazing. It was, like, the best choice that I could have made because... I was speaking to a room full of entrepreneurs, so I Mm -hmm. knew that they would get it. And I feel like I immediately created that bond with the audience to just let them know, hey, by the way, I know that I'm up here and it might seem like I have it all together, but I'm just like you. I'm just trying, you know, I might fail throughout this thing. So uh, and it really just kind of, um, no pun intended, set the stage for me to be able to get through that talk. So I think again it's just all about being honest about where you're at if you're nervous before talk talk about the fact that you're nervous get on camera share an instagram story share a video on linkedin and i don't know for me personally just being really really honest about where i'm at um has really helped me connect with my audience man that's so real and i can only imagine like just trying to go through that so like you you got gary v and then you're up next but i think the fact that you were unapologetically you at that moment it just had everybody in the room like you know what we're going to give her a try and we're going to see how this goes and they just were i guess overwhelmed on how good the turnout was yeah it was it was pretty awesome i had one guy that reached out to me afterwards and he um he mentioned like full out he's like i didn't think that you were going to bring anything valuable to the table Mm -hmm. and he's like i just wanted to apologize because you really know your stuff and i think that you know it's good to be authentic but it's also really good to um really work on confidence whether you are in school still whether you are just graduated you are knee deep in the job search uh, or in the smack in the middle of a new career. I think that daily working on your confidence and truly believing that you have what it takes to succeed, even if you're scared, despite that fear, is so, so, so important. I tell people when they are looking for um, work that maintaining their confidence is their new full-time job, yeah. so whether that is through meditation, reading motivational books, uh, listening to podcasts, watching TED Talks, whatever it takes to make sure that you are in the right headspace. Because I can tell you that I know as somebody that is hired, the difference between somebody who is going to get the job and who isn't going to get the job is the confidence that they have when they walk into the room. Yep. And people, you know, the ones that walk in with their shoulders slumped, their head down, and they're really kind of um, not too confident when they talk about their, their experience or what they want to achieve. Those are generally the ones that are not going to get jobs and they, they struggle for a long time. And I know I've definitely been in that position also, but the ones that can walk into the room and truly believe that they have what it takes are the ones that, that really do stand out. 
Yo, without a doubt. And to me, I think confidence is energy and your energy introduces you before you even speak. Uh, so I, I, that's such a powerful statement. So he, here we have uh, the queen of LinkedIn. And I feel like I would be doing the audience a disservice if I didn't ask you this. What are your top five tips on how to establish a great LinkedIn profile? Okay, so t- so number one is, I mentioned it before, but sprinkle your personality in everything that you do. Like, do not be afraid to be too creative, whatever feels like you, because again, uh, you know, a career is a relationship. And I think sometimes we get so caught up in thinking that we are indebted to the person that we're interviewing with, but it's, it's a relationship. If you want a long-term career at a place, you are also interviewing that place. So uh, use LinkedIn as an opportunity to also qualify people by sharing your experiences and sharing your personality because you want to attract the companies that like you for you. So that's number one. Um, number two is, uh, and I already mentioned this one as well, but uh, make confidence your full-time job everything Mm -hmm. that you post online should have that energy to it because that is going to draw people to you i'm all about inbound leads and attracting people to who you are so that's number two uh number three is reach out to people linkedin is not a space where you just it's not a clubhouse you don't just hang out with people that you already know imagine it as the world's largest networking event that's open 24 7 who do you want to connect with? So if you're reading a book and you love that book, then you should be going on LinkedIn afterwards and trying to connect with the author. And don't have this idea in your head that, oh my gosh, what if they don't accept it? I mm-hmm. have an inbox full of people that have never accepted my connection request, but you don't need every single person to. You just need one person, the right person to connect with you and believe in you. Just so that's, right number, that's number three. Uh, number four is get started now. My greatest regret in my career is the fact that I started all of this when I was 29 years old. I think Uh that if I had started earlier, I would be in a totally different position. How how early would you say? Like how earlier? As soon as you can, as soon as you can, you know, I go back to my old high school four times a year and I'm teaching high school kids now how to use LinkedIn. Um, and there are high school kids that are absolutely crushing it on the platform. Uh, it is not the same that it used to be. It used to be super stale and conservative. <laughs> it was acquired by Microsoft um, about a year and a half ago, mm-hmm. and it has changed dramatically. This is going to be a game changer for everybody coming out of school. So start now is my fourth. Um, and number five is um, is really I. It's so cheesy, but believe in yourself. I think that for most students, the biggest barrier. I think for actually all of us. We, our biggest barrier in our career is getting in our own way. Yeah. I think for a lot of students, it's, well, I don't have the experience yet. Well, as long as you wake up and you have thoughts in your head, start sharing them. Start learning how to communicate because the, the value of LinkedIn also is that you learn so much about who you are and what your strengths are. And it's really a great platform. The best skills that you can develop in your career are your communication skills. So regardless of whether or not you are generating leads, if you're getting jobs through LinkedIn, if you can spend every single day refining your communication skills, that's something that's going to serve you for the rest of your life. Man. I think that's that's five, right? Yeah, that's five. That's, and that, look, that's a solid five too, right? That's, that's yeah. like, that's a solid great five. So I got to ask you the question we ask every single guest that we have on this show. If you are in school or you're about to get out of school or if you're just someone that dropped out and you're asking yourself, school's over, now what? What would be the best advice that you would give that person? Ooh, that one's a deep one. Um, I think that uh, I think that staying curious is so important regardless of where you're at and and always remember who you were before the world told you who you should be I think that you know when we go through the school system there's a lot of things that are great to us you know and, and people come and they have all sorts of advice and the problem is is that the people that we're surrounded by they're bringing their own baggage to all of their advice. So it's, you know, it's not about like what's best for you, but maybe what's most uh, safe for you. So mm-hmm. I know for myself, I, you know, I had the advice from a friend of mine and he said that whatever you're doing between the ages of 13 or uh, eight and 13 is what you should be doing for the rest of your life. So the, oh, the advice is 
us, who were you before the world told you who you should be? What were you doing That's before powerful. the world told you? Yeah. Uh, and for me, it was public speaking. It was writing. And I lost that. I lost those talents because I felt like I couldn't make a career. I, it wasn't serious enough for me to make a career out of it. Mm. And so you go through that system, and then all of a sudden, you, you're like me, and you end up in legal studies. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, where am I at? I think it's so easy for that to happen. But I think that as long as you keep nurturing that person uh, that you were before the world told you who you should be, you will become successful. Because I was so lucky that I found a way back to those skills of writing and all of those things. And it really was a side hustle that became a full-time job. Um, but stay connected to that, who that person was, uh, because there are going to be a million opinions, but you know, you better than anybody else on earth. Man. And, and thank you for adding that value. And I think that age of eight to 13, man, there's so many different things people are doing that are so passionate about and just good at naturally. And I think that was a, a huge, um, uh, drop of knowledge that you just gave. So Michaela, if I'm out there right now trying to figure out how to get in touch with you, tell our listeners where they can find you. Just give them all of your info. All of the info. Okay. Uh, so obviously on LinkedIn, I spend way too much time on there. Uh, so it's Michaela Alexis. My first name is just Michael with an A. And uh, my website is nickalexis.com. I also post quite a bit on Instagram. I love Instagram stories. That's where I spend my time if I am going behind the scenes before photo shoots or big talks or anything like that. So if you're interested in watching somebody have a complete meltdown, then that's where you'll find <laughs> me. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much all the places that I hang out. That's perfect. Guys, always remember, dream it, believe it, go out and get it. Yo, what you think? I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I want to know what you learned. So if you wouldn't mind, would you take a screenshot of you listening to the podcast on your phone right now? Upload to your Instagram stories, tag me at Sean R. Anthony underscore, and then let me know in that Instagram story what is one thing that you learned. I love hearing from you, my listeners, thought leaders, former or current students all around the world. Let me know. And while you're doing this, go inside the podcast app, subscribe, leave a five-star review and a five-star rating. Again, this helps us reach more people. And if you want to be a part of this mission, helping us change the world one person at a time, it makes a massive difference by you leaving a review. Thanks so much. I'll see you next week. And remember, dream it, believe it, Go out and get it.